Postmarket OS wants to put Linux on your old Android device. Testing your overclock from the terminal. GDP Pocket is finally shipping. And uh, how about a little Wi-Pi? Hmm, it's a great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, taking that midweek break, sitting back, relaxing, and just having a nice chat about some of the neat things we found going on in that particular space, kind of like we do every week, um, and like every week, uh, check him out, he's over here, that's uh, Pedro Mateus, you know him, you love him, (laughs) you tolerate him, and of course, I'm Vin Stone, as always, doing it live. With nothing but penguin sauce, which kind of sounds dangerous, man. Hey, what's going on with you this week? Uh, Anything new? Uh, Uh, I saw your post on Google Plus with your iPad that you stole from the NHS. I didn't steal it. It was assigned to me. (laughs) And my only choice was either that particular iPad. Well, it it didn't have to be that particular one. I could have picked one of the new uh, Air 2s, but that's way too fancy for me. So I picked the oldest one I could find, the, uh, the 3. And the other, only other option was a Dell laptop that takes over three minutes to boot. And I said, no, 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 no. No, you, you couldn't like rob an SSD out of a... They don't have SSDs. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah. that's definitely a thing. Another thing that is a thing that's still a thing is GDP pockets are shipping, man. Oh, Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, things with touch screens, and this one actually runs Linux. The Linux version is now shipping, and if you uh, happen to follow our friend the Atomic Ass on the G Pluses or on Twitter or what have yous, uh, you may have seen a picture what he posted of him with the um, his uh, GPD Pocket, which was, I will be the first one to admit, when I saw the Indiegogo for the GPD Pocket, I went, okay, no, this is not, this is never going to succeed. They don't have a working prototype. I was wrong. Um, But I was still very uh, cautiously pessimistic. And even after their Indiegogo was successful, I said, I'll be surprised if they ever actually ship. And I'll be damned. They're shipping. (laughs) And, uh, so, listen, uh, and, uh, I was kind of surprised, and yeah, we know they are shipped. They originally, the first ones, it seems, shipped out with uh, Windows. Mm-hmm. That horrible, horrible, naughty thing it is. And the later ones with Linux, they are out, and they're there in the chain. And Atomic did get his, and if you waited for the Linux version, you get an extra sensor on yours that wakes it the heck up when you open it. So uh, I guess there's oh, something to be said neat. to that. And this... It's good to see something from an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter that's hardware related. Delivering. Yeah. Yeah. Actually ship and, you know, hashtag Carmageddon rewards or the game (laughs) for Linux. Uh, Nope. Not bitter about that five years later. Mm -mm. No, not not at all. Mm -mm. No, man. I'm just really glad that that was definitely a thing. Uh, Audacious 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 we have that in the notes and i, I kind of had to learn what it was yes indeed uh so we're not talking about critter <laughs> we're talking about audacious <laughs> okay all right oh this is 3.9 so uh those of you who have been using linux for a while and chances are maybe you started trying linux at around the time that a little bit of software was still viable on windows which was called winamp uh and There was a very similar um, uh, music player on Linux called XMMS. And then it became Audacious, which has seen a release. Yes, an actual Audacious update, version 3.9. You can download it. Chances are uh, it will show up on your distro's repositories in (laughs) very little time. Uh, They did introduce a bunch of new things. they enhanced the Qt UI. They improved usability in a bunch of different ways, uh, one of which was uh, that Ven put in the show notes. Uh, improved playlist search bar and full drag and drop uh, capability for playlist entries, 
Welcome to the 21st century, Audacious. How do you like it? <laughs> uh, man, listen, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of had to look at this and I had to think, when was the last time I listened, sat down and listened? And you would think, because I got a bunch of expensive audio stuff in here, this is where I would listen to my music. It's not. Mm -hmm. It just isn't. I, I just listen to it throughout the speakers around the house. I don't have a desktop music player unless YouTube. Well, hang on. Yeah, I do. It's an electron wrap thing called Chrome. Um, yeah. YouTube. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, way back in the day, though, you know, late 90s, mid 90s, somewhere in there, the first thing I, I would install would be XMMS. Yeah. And then I would get on uh, something that rhymed with Rapster because there was a CLI client for it back in the day. <laughs> and maybe I'd make some mix CDs because I was a teenager and didn't know any better. Um, this, this is a descendant of XMMS, and I'm glad something like this is still around. I, you know, still getting updates. <laughs> yeah, and people are still using it. It's good, uh, but I. I'm, I'm probably never going to install it. I think what really killed it for me, Pedro, was just mobile devices. Because er everything I have is able yeah. to cast everything <laughs> else. And yeah, turn I mean, on turn on the blue teeth and put your headphones on and go about doing whatever it is you do. Right. Done. You got all the music. It's <laughs> as much as we complain about like, where's the future at as we walk around the house hitting one button to cast the video mm -hmm. to whatever. <laughs> and device. hitting a button on the side of our uh, blue teeth headset to pick up a call. Right. <laughs> but we're, we're not going to forget about Krita because you, you've got some things about it going on. Yes. All right. So uh, this is Krita. Uh, they also released a new version. Hopefully this one doesn't come with uh, <laughs> tech snafus. Uh, version 3.2.0 uh, comes with the new GMyQt plugin. It's fully integrated. They also fix the crashes uh, that you would get whenever you spawned a second Krita window. Like, for example, an image preview. Uh, and uh, I like in their downloads. For some reason, <laughs> Firefox thinks this needs to load this as text. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's an app image. It will show up as text if you give it half a chance. Uh, but yeah, uh, the if you build Krita from Sauce instead of uh, downloading the app image, uh, and you build it against a version newer uh, version of Qt newer than five point seven point one, the mouse wheel bug is fixed. Finally, took him a while. And the default setting for multiple instances is now respected because it used, it used to not be the case because it used to allow multiple Krita instances by default, or at least it said it would. But the moment you try to start a second one, it would just tell you, no, it's already running. Hmm. So that's been fixed. Good. So, I mean, kind of help me out. If I, I know how to use GIMP because I've been using it for almost hmm? 20 years. Uh, is this something just like basic GIMP shooping or something? What, what is this really focused at? No, this is a digital illustration tool. It's not exactly GIMP. You can do illustration in GIMP, sure. But this one is more focused on the drawing than the editing. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so... It's Adobe Illustrator. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, I can dig that. Maybe if you have a Wacom tablets, which have very good mm -hmm. Linux support... You could, uh, d didn't you get Nori a, um, digitizer? Yeah, I did. Uh, the, it wasn't a Wacom specifically. It's the Trust Slimline one. Mm -hmm. Didn't have yeah, any issues with it. But it also, it. it uses the exact same driver, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> you just, uh, plug it in, and if you're running Mate or Gnome, some GTK-based, um, desktop environment, you, in the control center, you get an option to configure the, uh, the drawing tablet. It gives you all the options. It's really nice, actually. Well, this next thing coming up and it's like, oh, come on. But hey, anybody who's writing about Linux, we kind of want to give them a plug. All this business is going to be in our show notes. It's definitely thing. Five reasons Linux is now a great option for anyone. Uh, you want to talk about fluff pieces? Hey, man. <laughs> some people get paid by the word. Uh, I just thought we'd go through this and take a look at it. 
Well, starting with number one. What you need is an app store. Yes, app stores are a thing. Uh, no one uses them. <laughs> Why don't you ask Windows users how they feel about app stores? They love it, man. No, man. I, I, I like downloading my DLLs and all of the shady web zones and wonder how come I'm all infected. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, PPAs, stuff like that. Ubuntu has been trying to make an app store thing for a while. Susie's got its <laughs> thing. Synaptic is still the best. Yeah, the, the, it's kind of laughing at that. The image we're looking for your audio listeners is like, here's this is how it used to look. And I was like, no, don't, son. This is how it still looks. <laughs> That's what it looks like right, right. now. <laughs> um, coming up to number two. The basics are covered. Need to write a paper for school, LibreOffice. I'm using that currently right now for show notes. Uh, yeah, that's there. You're going to suffer massive compatibilities, unfortunately, with mm -hmm. um, macros, uh, uh, any type of advanced formatting in Word, uh, Excel, or PowerPoint, and their LibreOffice equivalents, obviously. Uh, Google Docs. I mean, just, just, just give over yeah. to the board. <laughs> give it up. No. LibreOffice is great. Uh, number three. Number three. Three ways to manage your... Wait, no. What was number three? <laughs> Updates. Uh, updates are free, free and, and easy. easy. Uh, e okay, all right. What operating? Yes. <laughs> I think the last person to charge for updates outside of micro. I think Microsoft is like Win Windows Ten Forever, bro. We're we're giving it away, and um, but Apple used to charge for their updates. Yeah, they, they don't even do that anymore, do they? No, they stopped doing that with the last X ten point something. I think it was Lion or Mountain... No, Mountain Lion was way too late. It was Lion or Leopard. Hmm. One of those. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's... It's Linux. Of course, updates are going to be free. Easy. Well, that's debatable. It mostly depends on what distro you're running. But sure, that one I have no uh, objections to. We'll, we'll stick around for our feedback section because we have somebody <laughs> who thinks that this is a, it's moon magic to update Linux. Mm -hmm. Number four... The interfaces are simple. People recognize Windows, eh, the biggest strength is easy to use. Da -da 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 -da, Windows 10, blah, blah, blah. Um, Bob's your uncle. Uh, I'm not going to say interfaces are simple for Linux. They're just completely different. Say what you will. The whole start button type thing. Mm -hmm. Windows didn't come up with that. But you know what? That's a good idea. That logically works. That's a thing you want to stick with, like CDE. Um, having that launch menu down there. Uh, most of the desktops did. And Unity. Unity was like, Windows 10 and Windows 8 really <laughs> yeah. irritated people Windows. by messing with the UI. <laughs> Let's have a cup of that. Um, yep. <laughs> but, I mean... It's choice, man. I mean, we, we really can just kind of pick whatever we want. I, I like XFCE4 because even if somebody does come in here and start messing around with the computer, 90, 95% chance you're like, how do I do thing? Like, I, I don't know. I don't ever use the thing. Keeps people off my computer. <laughs> That's why I keep a uh, bare bones version of OpenBox installed on this box. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything when it boots. It's just a gray background. It's like, uh, uh, how do I think? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> and last but definitely least, what do we have? Uh, Linux now comes pre-installed. Valid point. Yes, <laughs> yes it does. <laughs> no, man. Um, that is kind of important because everyone says Linux needs X, Y, and Z in order to be the year of the Linux. That, no, Linux needs to ship pre-installed. That's step mm -hmm. one. Everything else is gravy on top of that. And, and it needs... Uh, the thing is, there are plenty of uh, stores that sell um, pre-installed Linux mm -hmm. on laptops, desktops, tablets even. But they're not the mainstream stores. We need Linux-loaded laptops to hit and stay in the shelves of mainstream stores. Well, not stay as in not selling, is stay as in keep a presence there so people can see them. And not running Unity, because I, I saw people looking at uh, Pedro, Unity Pedro, laptops. Pedro, it's, 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 listen, hipster, it's not cool to make fun of Unity anymore. <laughs> of course not. Even Canonical admitted that it wasn't good enough. <laughs> but you just can't let go of it, can you, Ben? Deep, no. deep-seated <laughs> hatred. Uh, 
No, that's a, that's absolutely a thing. But we have a lot of vendors. We have System76. Uh, who sent you the laptop last week? Uh, Entroware. Entroware. Um, Dell? Dell, Dell. Yes. Um, I think Leno- a... does Lenovo ship Linux? Uh, yes, uh, Lenovo has a couple of Linux uh, offerings. Uh, there's also Slimbook also offers the KDE Slimbook specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, we got choices now. Some of you old timers might remember for the hot second. I think it was the Best Buys that carried Lindos or something like that in their store. They were yeah. Linux pre-installed. <laughs> oh, uh, no. the, those uh, old Asus Triple E clamshell netbooks came with uh, Zandros. Mm-hmm. Yep, proprietary Linux. <laughs> oh, so strange, strange days, but. Not not as strange as what our good friends over at Facebook have been up to, right? Oh, no. Well, it's not strange what uh, Facebook's been up to. It's strange to have the Apache Foundation oh, get off correction. their ass and All do right. something. I, I just want to say real quick, Mr. Red, you're right. It was Walmart. All right, never mind. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, uh, but yeah, the Apache Foundation uh, kind of made some waves. Um, this uh, is back from uh, July, but I completely missed it. And it's here now, uh, so... Facebook decided to change uh, a, l- a certain license uh, that includes not just uh, RocksDB, but React.js and a few other things uh, because they dropped the, um, let's see, RocksDB actually dropped the Facebook plus uh, patent uh, license or patent grant uh, license uh, from... Well, they changed it from the Facebook one to Apache V2, and React.js is keeping FB and uh, PL. So the Apache Foundation basically blacklisted the uh, Facebook BSD and patent grant license, uh, which means that they can no longer redistribute React.js with Apache in the same package. Facebook was reportedly shocked for a whole of five minutes until they re- repackaged everything with Lite HTTPD or N- Nginx, uh, IIS, anything at all, really. But yeah, it's uh, Facebook refused to relicense uh, React.js. So it's no longer compatible license wise, of course, with the um, Apache license. I said. <laughs> So uh, at the end of the day, I can still have my Apache and React JS too. Just not, it, it just doesn't come in a combo meal anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you can still set it up yourself, but you can't redistribute it. Oh my God! So so you're you're <laughs> telling me this uh, wall of text is like oh, it's slightly more inconvenient now. Yep. All right, that <laughs> happened. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, does this okay. affect anything other than? Uh, no, it's uh, literally uh, the license-wise uh, Apache and React.js are incompatible. That's hmm. it. <laughs> All right. I mean, will this affect anything? Uh, so long as neither Facebook or the Apache Foundation go out of their way to purposefully affect something? I don't think so. Hey, I mean, do you think <laughs> Facebook was like... Smoking crazy sauce, or were they just being Facebook? Because Facebook's got a lot of open source projects. You got to give them credit for that. I don't use Facebook, but and React JS is a source available project. I have issues calling it open source when they have that stupid patent license, but it's source available. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was a big story, non story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Up next is something that's kind of a little bit interesting. Linux-based post-market OS project. Uh, yeah, man, they, they want to take your old cell phone, your mobile, mm. and shove the Linux on it. Does it sound like a good idea? Uh, I've seen that done a few times before, and it's still an idea that I like, yes. Although post-market OS is a really bad name. <laughs> Change that. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, they say, uh, the developers, this is very, very, uh, uh, new. The developers have technically gotten the system to boot mm-hmm. on, uh, the, let's see, 
Samsung Galaxy Nexus, the Google Nexus 4, 5, and 7, the 2012 version of the 7, and a few other Samsung, HTC, LG, Motorola, and Sony smartphones. Even the Nokia and uh, if for some reason you bought that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's a Linux-based OS that's meant to do for phones what uh, a um, what Linux does for laptops and old desktops. Just keeps them going long after an expiration date. So basically, like uh, the third-party ROMs already do. Yeah. <laughs> Except this is an Android, it's Linux, which means it's not going to have the Android apps, which then raises the point, why? It does. Uh, listen, this is a neat project. I like this. This definitely falls underneath. And here, here's the thing. You use your mobile or a tablet that's five years old. Just cut it on. You know you have one laying around. Just, just go ahead and give, have a go with it. Not here. I moved recently, remember? <laughs> it's miserable. And yeah, all right. Maybe you're not dealing with... You might be able to... This is going to be on the metal. Uh, I should say currently right now in its current state, it boots. That's what it does. Yeah, you it know, boots. <laughs> it, it passes the butter. Um, yeah. I, I wish them all the best of luck, but... I don't see the market for this because also I'm not one of the people who's like planned obsolescence, which is a th it's engineering's better now, you know, mm -hmm. things don't last like they used to because the engineering tolerances were not as tight as they are these days. So things were over-engineered. They tended to last a lot longer. Th these devices are, Pedro, am I, am I crazy? I think most of them are made to last at maximum five years. Yeah. They, you can actually tell laptops, tablets, phones. As soon as you cross the four or five year mark, it's mm -hmm. like, why is everything so slow? You, you, you didn't used to be this slow. I can see that. I can actually see that with my netbook, that Toshiba NB550D. Yeah. It's so slow. Even with the SSD, I... I knew it was always slow. It has a single core 1.2 gigahertz AMD CPU, well, APU, but it wasn't that slow back then. And now it's just stupid, stupid slow. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a thing. Planned obsolescence. Well, Pedro, do you know what I like to do with slow devices? Uh, I don't <laughs> overclock the snot out of them. <laughs> okay, that's not where my mind went, but good. Yes. <laughs> Stress terminal UI monitoring tool. Tell me about it. Never heard of it. Yeah, so uh, you may have heard of Stress. It's a teeny tiny tool. Uh, it's uh, all it does is it creates a job or ten jobs in a single uh, processor thread. Uh, and you can set it to run on, say, eight threads or however many threads your uh, CPU happens to have. And it will peg all those threads at 100% all the time. No rest. It's completely unrealistic. That is stress. But it's a very basic tool. That's really all it does. And these fine folks decided uh, that... Um, that was way too bare bones and they wanted to do something more. So they built a terminal UI around stress with Python, which admittedly, it looks kind of neat. Uh, you can see the uh, they have a GIF rolling by on the uh, GitHub page. That's really neat. It gives you uh, temperature. It gives you the load, everything. If any of the cores start misbehaving, you get an indication. It's actually a really neat tool. More importantly, um, it doesn't require X, so no, no. <laughs> you can remote you know SSH into this thing and run it and still have your incurses like interface. Um, could be helpful, possibly for troubleshooting unstable over oh, overclocks. New word overclocks. this week. <laughs> uh, I, I guess this would be handy for a set it forget it type solution. Like, all right, let's just see if this thing melts overnight. Don't mm -hmm. do that, kids. Do it in the day when you're not at home. It's even more exciting that way. 
Um, I would be interested, though. I think I would be interested to kind of get some feedback. To, um, anyone listening to the sound of my voice organ uh, for next week's show, just about the people. I mean, do you still overclock? And uh, on top of that, overclocking is one thing, but do you still do the burden stress tests? And do you even think that's really necessary these days? Considering this is an AMD FX 8370E, what I'm running, mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of want to make sure the uh, the overclock is stable and everything's properly baked in, so I don't get surprise uh, lockups or the um, or it just shutting itself off because it's overheating. So yeah, uh, admittedly, I use uh, I used stress couple of days ago when I took uh, uh, when I took my PC apart cleaned it all up put it back together mm -hmm. uh, made sure the overclock and everything else was still uh, in the UEFI it was it remembered ran stress for about an hour and a half I kind of left the house and came back uh, it was running fine didn't crash didn't shut itself off so neat I, I think uh, when we do the Ryzen build it's uh probably just going to get tested Saturday night. Mm -hmm. We'll call that a stress test. <laughs> but um, Yeah, Saturday nights we'll do that. <laughs> maybe you don't like rocking and rolling old school like we do and you want a shiny new laptop. Now, we covered this in depth Saturday on um, Linux Gamecast Weekly, so if you want to go back and give that a look, you can listen to Pedro mm -hmm. like ramble for an hour and a half about this, but he's going to give you a quick recap of... Uh, the Kratos, because that check cleared, yeah. right? They, they gave us thousands of dollars and... Uh, they gave us no money. Oh. They let us keep the uh, the laptop for a whole week. Uh, and it, it was a good thing that I, I still hadn't found a job at the time. So I had the time to run all the benchmarks, do all the things. Uh, the one thing that I didn't have the time for was to crack open the uh, bottom lid so I could have a look at how easy it was to... Uh, replace everything because it's one of the shortcomings of the laptop it doesn't have an access port for upgrades but outside of that the battery is kind of what you expect from a gaming laptop it's not good but it's not the worst uh gaming performance yeah you really want that gtx 1050 because it's it's not even comparable um i compared it uh, if you have a look at the graphs and you don't know what the uh, Lenovo B5080 is. That's my current laptop. That's the one I use. And yeah, the Kratos is actually a pretty good unit. Uh, assuming you don't mind chiclet keyboards and a very loud fan once you get into the games. Hmm. So, yeah. um, brass tax it for me, man. W what's it going to cost me for that configuration that you had and who would you recommend it? Uh, let's see. Uh, as uh, it was sent to me, that configuration was nine hundred and seventy-nine um, pounds. pounds. Yeah, nine hundred seventy-nine pounds. Uh, with it came with a 1080p screen, IPS, uh, eight gigs of RAM, DDR4. Uh, let's see, uh, an SM nine six one M dot two NVMe SSD, uh, two hundred fifty gig. Uh, <laughs> Pedro forgot that you can read all these specs on the page. I just asked him if he had recommended for the price. And yes, I would recommend it because as far as laptops go, you can't get one... Well, you can get one that cheap, but not with the 1050 and the uh, NVMe SSD. So yeah, it's actually a pretty good value if you're really in the market for a gaming laptop. Hmm. Yeah. All right, that's pretty cool, man. I'm definitely digging it, and I think you got some more hardware that we are, we're not going to disclose just yet, but there, yes. there's definitely some more hardware heading to Britannia. There are things inbound. Mm. He's definitely going to be providing another hand-on review, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So, um, we got a lot of people who make this show possible, Pedro. Yes. The, yes, we do. Uh, you know, it's well known, which we've known since Humble Bundle was a thing. Linux users are by far the most generous people in the world. Yeah, yeah, they are. They consistently pay more in the Humble Bundles than back in Windows. Yeah. It's like they recognize value for value. Most of them can also fly. That's also might not be true. Uh, but they also make this show possible. 
And I, yes. I, I would, we, we got a list of people to thank this week. Oh, yeah. So uh, if you, uh, chances are, if you looked at our Patreon today, we kind of have your name here. Uh, let's see. Mr. Avery Roth is a new Patreon. Thank you very much. Poopy upped his pledge. Only just last week, he uh, kicked us a few shekels and he's already upped. Uh, our Theron also upped his pledge. Oh, look. Patreon is blocked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh linux nuru uh bought us uh some fans some uh yes he wasn't a big enough oh, well. fan himself so he needed to buy us some tanzanian fans for the horizon box of business and steve-o steve-o uh also goes to the fine upsending cannibal wall today because he got you something didn't even a stick of gum uh two sticks <laughs> of gum um uh, just, ooh, don't no one look at Vin because he set it on the floor and he's got to go down and reach it. <laughs> yeah, so he uh, he got us the NVMe drives, right. which Working really fast. Uh, Samsung um, nine sixty. I was never Evo's. gone. It was an illusion. <laughs> um, no man, thanks, Stevo. And yeah. uh, it is yeah the nine sixty Evo. It's M dot two NVMe SSD. This is going in the box business. This is going to replace a thousand dollars worth of ssds and yolo raid that we've been using mm -hmm. for the show and yes um cooling will be provided by space tanzania, <laughs> tanzania. <here>. five <laughs> millimeter fans for tipsy danger the new box of business and we were talking like after our stream yesterday uh, go back and watch that if you want to see pedro and myself just flail miserably around <laughs> not one but two games with motoring vehicles yep. and rockets attached to their arse um it took us forever to set up the Amazon thing because I'm just like, I don't know, man, I don't. And we finally did. And you guys have just blown our minds. That's why I always get stuttery about it. I was like, is this a practical joker? You guys just like pulling one on us. But no, everyone's been awesome doing this cheat mode. We're about three weeks away from the Ryzen. We're going to be able to do a lot more cool mm -hmm. stuff. And we won't be sitting here shaking the entire time. We're waiting for everything to explode <laughs> Will it catch into fire. fire. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, so much for making that possible. Also, double thanks for everyone shopping through our affiliate links. That adds up like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's not a ton of extra coin, but every little bit helps because, again, no ads. And uh, yep. they said it was an insane idea to do something like this, but we wanted to just say, hey, man, let's, let's do a Linux podcast that's moderately to mildly competent. And there's not 40 minutes of, you know, ads per hour. And it's kind of brilliant. Okay. Uh, all that shilling has worked up an appetite. Yes. Give me some pie. That teeny tiny slice of pie, which this week starts with uh, some networking pies. The first one is a Wi-Fi hotspot. What's it about? Uh, it's a Wi-Fi hotspot. <laughs> what do you want from it? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a Raspberry Pi based Wi-Fi hotspot. Come on, man. I mean, okay. what, what are you, a cop? <laughs> Um, <laughs> no man uh, hey on top of that with a little bit of tinkering you can also turn this into a repeater that's why yeah. i posted it not because of wi-fi hotspot Let, let's let's just be real with each other first thing is like wi-fi hotspot i don't care about that i have tons of repeaters and stuff like that around the house but if if i could set this up all the repeaters all the places all the things but if it's going to only does it say if it does 5 gigahertz and 2.4 or do you need the external it depends on uh what you're using does a raspberry a, pi 3 i don't know if it supports 5 gigahertz but if if it the internal wi-fi board supports 5 gigahertz then mm -hmm. yes it can do it can broadcast ladies like and that. gentlemen that's always <laughs> a good idea if you're doing any type of homebrew repeaters um use 5 gigahertz for your back hole uh no that, that's cool and I have a MiFi, which is just an LTE puck that I carry around with me everywhere. So, yeah. yeah I... This is my LTE puck. Your it's my Android flip phone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, if it gets the job done, I think that's kind of a neat hey. project. Okay, let, let, let's get off the Wi-Fi topic and talk about something completely different. Yes, let's talk about uh, using a Raspberry Pi to manage the devices in your Wi-Fi network. <laughs> Yep, this is what it is. It's um, Wi-Fi Boss. It it does what it says on the tin. 
uh, when you connect this to a uh, to your router, uh, well, all it does is what you could already do with basically any distro as long as you want to take some time and set up that particular brand of functionality. It gives you a little GUI that fires up whenever a new device joins your Wi-Fi. And if you don't recognize it, you can just hit the don't recognize button and it will give you uh, a description of where that device is, give or take, by the uh, strength that the router is getting back from the device. It will give you some other things and will let you just block it or give it uh, limited access. You can also set a 24 hour guest pass. Say if you have guests over, but you don't want to give them the, uh, you know, permissions to use the Wi-Fi at will, you can just give them a 24 hour pass done. So yeah, it's just a really, it's a pretty GUI wrapped in a Raspberry Pi ISO that you flash to your uh, micro SD card, load in your Raspberry Pi, and it's something neat. If you have a touch screen for uh, your Raspberry Pi, it's just literally something that's on the wall or on a desk somewhere, and you hit the button to authorize or deauthorize devices. Hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um... There was nothing against the project what, what whatsoever. I, I mean, if you're connected to my Wi-Fi, it sounds like your problem. <laughs> yeah, that's probably your password not doing its job. And um, yeah, it's kind of neat, like the range finding stuff and all that. But yeah, mm-hmm. eh, not nothing against the project. I just like it seems like a lot of trouble. Um. Might be fun for a school project or something like that, but I, when I think about stuff like this, Pedro, it's like, how bored would I have to be to, in the, after reading through that and then looking for what it does, it was exponential. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'd get about 25% done with that project. And uh, that's because you live alone. Say you live with someone who is not as technically minded as you. All of a sudden, oh yeah, neat little thing so they can manage the network while you're not No, Pedro, if I lived with somebody not technically minded as me, I would buy one with a wicked simple pre-made interface, or they'd probably already ordered one while I was halfway through sticking this together. (laughs) It doesn't take all that long. All you need is a, uh, if you want a screen uh, to... Uh, like a touch screen to do everything just directly on the Pi. That's the most complex bit. Everything else just it's hey, loading a Pi. That's pretty cool. I, I'm not giving you a hard time because what I got coming up next, I'm just throwing this in because I read across it. Tardis case, removable top, Raspberry Pi mm-hmm. 2 or 3. You can download it. You can print it out. Um, what is this? Yeah, Utilimaker 2 extended. Or you, you can send this to, there's a couple of places to mm-hmm. get them printed, but yeah, completely free. And, um, I might've already ordered one. Uh, so <laughs> may have, <laughs> may, maybe I, I, I I'm, I'm not going to swear to that. that. That's just kind of a cool thing. Says the guy with the Tardis mug, but <laughs> might've ordered one for the pie. All right. I, I think that's going to wrap it up, man. Running a little bit long this week. Uh, Indeed. before we get out of here, we, we love talking to you every week, but we, we like it when you can get back with us. Uh, give us a little feedback. Let, let us know all the beautiful things that we got wrong. And um, or maybe some things that we do right or just your opinions, thoughts, hints, ideas. And how can they do that? You can do that by going to LinuxGameCast.com, hitting the contact button, and making sure you pick LWDW on the little drop downy forum. Uh, then filling out the rest of the contact form, filling in the captcha. That's it. Just uh, make your message count, because we get a few, and mm-hmm. uh, if it's not good, we're not going to feature it here. And good, in this case, actually means something constructive, something not so constructive. Basically, this show, it's a lot more permissive on the feedback than that other show, what we do. All right. So Coming up first, Matt Clark kind of walks out of the gate, because we asked last week, and he oh, delivered. Yes. We're like, all right, Fizz... FizzFS, what is this moon technology? Tell us. He's like, if I recall correctly, FizzFS is uh, 
like library, I used to let you more or less mount zip files so you can access the files from your program without having to unzip them. Meant for act asset access in game engine. It's the new version. Guess what? It seems to be pretty awesome. All right. Okay. Uh, so I guess that explains how, um, well, that uh, tells me exactly how the uh, Game Boy and whatever emulators can just pull the game files directly from the zip without you having to decompress it. Hmm. Neat. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I looked into it. I was like, yeah, that's about my pay grade. I'm not touching that, but... It's always good to get things clarified and explained because yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I love learning. I do not pretend I know everything, man. I mean, don't don't ever get like that. So, uh, I, I, I'm not even. I, I was kind of not even sure whether or not <laughs> I wanted. This, this is Monster Cameron, isn't it? I, I didn't know <laughs> if I wanted to include this or not because this is either a low level troll. Or a Windows user, which, in all fairness, they're kind of hard to tell apart. Pedro. Okay, so uh, Linux has always been a hassle. Reasons, colon. Installing an app the Linux way. Period. Okay, then you go into a list. Uh, that's weird. Uh, no repository location. Why do you need to know that? Register PPA for download auth. What? Update APT. Okay, that you need to do. Avoid package manager conflict issue. What kind of a janked up system are you running? For uninstall, locate PPA, then purge, find repo, location, and remove, then update APT again. Oh, please, Windows, this is always be one click away. Uh, are you, uh, what are you smoking? I don't know, man. I didn't have the not sure if serious thing queued up, which I should have. Uh, uh, okay, let, let's try to look at this. Know the repository location. Windows equivalent. Nowhere to download. Go to your web zone. Uh, register PPA for download auth. Uh, that's only Ubuntu, man. You don't know what you're talking about. Update app. Uh, yeah, run Windows update. Uh, avoid package manager conflict issues. Oh, download all the codecs or things that you need in order to make it run. Mm -hmm. um, or mm -hmm. the DLLs. Uh, for uninstall, locate, purge. Clearly don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yes. Sudo apt uninstall or um, we don't use it no, anymore. No, sudo PPA purge and then the PPA. Yes, you can do that. But, yeah, I mean, if but you don't normally run around. I'm very. I don't know. What do you do, Major? I'm. I'm very because I do LTS upgrades. Mm -hmm. I'm very dodgy about adding third-party PPAs. Depends on the PPA. Uh, okay. There are some PPAs that I use, namely the OBS one. Because, hey, lazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have a few PPA ones, uh, uh, updated PPAs that I use regularly, but I can't say I've ever had a package manager conflict issue with any of those PPAs. Uh, I, ooh. What was the last time you've had a package manager conflict? Or something. Uh, uh, Fuduntu was still a thing. Uh -huh. So four yeah. years minimum. Yeah. Twenty from twenty thirteen back to twenty ten in that window somewhere. <laughs> Times have changed, man. And I guess, uh, oh please, in Windows, this is always be one click away. Uh, yeah, I guess that explains why malware is so prevalent over there. <laughs> Oh. and on that yeah. bombshell we don't have it we don't have anywhere to go um beautiful people thank you for supporting this uh we enjoy doing it thank you for watching if you can catch us live we always do that three o'clock you can join in the chat we'll have the feed uh the full thing up for patrons later on and it'll be available for everyone in three days though so nothing's behind the mm -hmm. wall guys no worries on that if you want to contact me i mean just send us some hate mail um for the saturday show if you get anything ideas doing that we like that or for this show just some regular feedback that's also a thing um at Vin stone on the twitters you can contact me i'll respond or i might click the heart button or something like that where, where can they find you p baby <laughs> well uh everyone can find me uh plus brother mateos on google plus if you're into that ghost town don't don't go there 
we kind of like it how it is. Mm -hmm. And at an accounted for on Twitter, which chances are uh, if you uh, share funny stuff or interesting stuff and you follow me, I will probably give you a follow back if I don't forget. Which sometimes happens. <laughs> oh, also, I don't do the instant follow backs on Twitter, so... Yeah, me neither. I always wait like a couple of weeks because of the follow bots. So, oh, I yeah. don't. you got to post stuff and things that I find interesting if I'm going to follow you. <laughs> because I use Twitter for news feeds and all that. Hey, uh, how about some credits? Let's do that. Ooh, 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 ooh. Look at it. Look at, you know... The names of the fancy people who give us money. Well, that's Ven's name. No one cares about that. That's Pedro's name. No one knows that's who me. he is. <laughs> no that, one knows me. You guys, hey. Chat Realm Dynamic. That's, that's our those executive are the ones producers. Who yeah. And these are regular producers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of them. They're brilliant. That's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> they keep on going. Ah. It never stops. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's just not stopping. And of course, hey, there's Brad. Brad. <laughs> chug, 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 chug. Can we do it? Can we do it? Seriously. Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. I can't believe that name stuck. Yeah, well, I couldn't fit Wednesday all the way in there. 